we're, in, we're interviewing a Mr. Hector Smith. He's 78 years old, and he's going to be telling us about the period of 1920 to 1930. Maybe you'd just like to tell us a bit about yourself, Mr. Smith. Well, I'm a retired person. I've been worked all my life hard in these mining villages and in the, these small towns in Scotland. But there's a subject of our discussion now is a small mining village in Scotland. We will give you a history and an idea on the types of people and how they behaved, how they lived, how they eat, and everything else in the families. Thanks, Mr. Smith. Now we're going to be asking you on a series of topics. The first one's power, and then we're going to be asking you about food, jobs, mm -hmm. the washing, toilets, the transport, sicknesses, the economy, the war, housing, clothing, and entertainment. Yes. And I'll start off with power, and the first question I'd like to ask you is what materials, or what did they use for power? Well, in this village, it being a mining village, They were all driven by coal. Everything was all steam at that particular time. Right, and um, the lighting was made by gas from the local gas works, and it was lit by a, a gas man who come round every night. And when the dark was approaching, there's a special tool which you lit the gas the gas the gas uh, lamps. Right, thanks so Turn the gas on, turn it off. And, um, yes. Thanks, Mr. Smith, for telling us about power. The next subject that we're going to be asking about is food. Maybe you'd like to tell us a bit about what type of food they had. Well, the standard food in the morning, of course, being the Scots people, was porridge. Everybody had their porridge in the morning. And then they had a snack during dinner time during the meal time at dinner, I and mean, then at night, between five o'clock and six, you had your real heavy meal of the day, your dinner, which comes composed of uh, Scotch broth, potatoes, and cold meat. On another occasions, and maybe two days a week, it would be fish, or potted meat, cold meat again. Right, thanks a lot, Mr. Smith. And um, what about the prices of food? Was food expensive, or...? How, how would you explain the price of food compared to today's prices? Oh, well, there's absolutely no comparison because the food in these days in the villages and in the towns was very cheap. And everybody had their own gardens and grew their own vegetables. Therefore, the, 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 no matter what you needed, they always grew their own. Right. And the potatoes was very cheap. You could get a bag of potatoes for a few shillings. Turnips. Did you eat much fish? No, it was hard to get. Fish was had to be brought for the fishing village, which was quite a distance away, but we maybe got the fish, the fish man, twice a week. A right. Tuesday and a Friday. Um, thanks a lot for telling us about that, Mr. Smith. The next subject which I'm going to ask you about was the situation of jobs. And I know that today there's um, quite hard to get jobs. What was it like back in period of 1920 to 1930. Well, this is uh, <clears throat> really a hard one in a way because all these houses in this village belong to the mine, the mine owners. And you, if you stayed in the village, you, get, you was given a house from them. They gave you a house. But if you left their employment, they put you out of the house. That's why everybody was always around about the, the mining village and around the colliery they stayed in the houses given to them by the main owner. Thanks. From that I gather that the main job was mining. What other jobs were there? Well, the, the, the mines employed mostly all the men, and they didn't work in the pits. They usually were a foundry close by, 
and the men and there quite a few of them worked in this foundry which kept, kept, they kept them going. Right, um, back then did they have a doll and if so what was it compared to the normal working man? Oh, there were no doll in the early days. You got an allowance if you was unemployed but you got it paid through the, the village, not through the government. You got it to what they called it, parish relief and that was a few shillings to keep you going till you got a job. Right, um, right, and what, what percentage of the population would you say was unemployed? Oh, there were very, very few of them unemployed for the simple reason if you was unemployed and couldn't get a job, you left the district and you tried other places. And if you didn't get a job in any other places, the natural thing you did was return to your village and go and join the army. That's why Scotland has, has so many soldiers in their ranks, because of, if they couldn't get work, they just joined up. And we had the well-known and famous regiment, the Black Watch, which was instituted in Fife. Right, thanks a lot for telling us about the first two subjects. I'm just going to switch off the tape and check if this is recorded. Okay, Mr Barrett? Thank you. Right. right, I've just checked how the tape's recorded, but it's not very well. I'm just going to have to make do with it. The next subject that we're going to discuss is the washing. Now we know that back then they didn't have they didn't have um, washing as we know it. No, no washing machines. Washing machines. So we're just going to ask you how they how they did the washing back in the... Well in, in, in the villages they were all practically the same standard. They all did their washing in a, in a what you call a, a, a big shed and there's so many boilers are located to the amount of people that was in that village. And the result is that there was maybe 12 boilers for boiling the water and uh, there were three boilers to three, three boilers to nine families. The result is everybody had a different day for doing their washing to the whole, to the Monday to the Friday. You weren't allowed and these days they wash on the Saturday or the Sunday. Right, thanks a lot. And um, what about the toilets? Oh, well, right, you ready? <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Is it going? Yeah, it's going. <laughs> well, the, the, the toilets, they, they were communal too, the same as the wash house, and there's so many toilets allocated to how many streets, an average of one toilet to every three families in the whole of the village. They were looked after by a local workman who cleaned them and see everything was uh, every facility was good for the people in the village so there'd be no disease and spread in, in any way. So we um, know that there was one toilet with every three households. That proves that the toilets were an outside toilets. Yes. What did they have for toilets? Did they have um, flushing toilets? Did, no. Was it just a, a deep pit and dunk or something yes. like that? Right, like out in the farms, but you know about that. Um, the next subject is sickness. Well, we know that today we've got quite a few breakthroughs. That, you know, we didn't, we don't have the sicknesses today that they had back then. Now, just what type of sicknesses did they have? Well, there were the usual childhood diseases. There were diphtheria, there were some chicken pox, there was the flu, there was and the various diseases that everybody had in their childhood but we never was bothered with much once you grew up and had your strength uh, you just had the normal troubles that any family had no matter what the type of society they lived in all right now did they what type of transport did they use did they use um cars or carriages horses just tell us a bit about that. Well, where we, ready? Yep. Where we stayed, the transport was, the, the long distance transport was buses. And they would run a regular service <coughs> every day, seven days a week. And uh, <coughs> the local transport was tram cars. And the, the, the fare for running from the local service depot into the town was four pence which took you into the town and you played the same coming back. It was very cheap running. In fact, uh, the services of transport at that time was the cheapest in the whole of Scotland because you get 20 miles for tons, two pence. Right. And did many people own cars? 
No, very few cars were used, were used at that time. Nobody had, well some of them had cars, but they, they weren't as common as what they are now. Right. How about bikes? Oh, everybody was a, a necessity. Bikes were a necessity in school because they used them to go to their work, they used them to come back to their work, they used them to go into the town to the factories, and they used them for coming home. They, everybody had their bicycle. Yeah. And what type of what type of roads do they use? Because we, today we've got the tar roads, quite smooth. Were, were they as smooth as the tar roads today? Or were they? Oh. What were they like? Well, as tarmac was invented by a Scotsman, which is true, our roads were the best in the world. And I quite safely say in the present day, there's no country in the world has a standard type of roads as we have in Scotland, and that's a fact. Right. How about the economy? We know that the Australian economy is suffering at the moment. What was the Scottish economy like back then like? Well, a great deal dependent on the amount of coal that they sent abroad, because that was through the miners and the villages got their money, and if they, they, the orders were scared.